On Christmas Day 1960, we have actually managed to catch an American cruiser force, that's the USS Oklahoma City off the coast of Norway with her escorts. And by catch, I mean sunk, because these ships are going down very, very rapidly. There they go, and uh, yeah, you do not do that with, uh, with, the, uh, with my battle fleet operating in the area. In the, at the same time, I am sending, and again, we are running very much low on supply here. And I am not sure why that is. We should be able to get supply out of Moscow, but uh, we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep pushing. Uh, we have a supply hub here in Tula. We'll keep pushing to connect the lines and encircle the uh, open Soviet territory. There's not much of a resistance left here, so we'll just deal with that. And we have managed to complete the encirclement of the Russian forces in Ukraine. And we will now start working on eliminating said forces. There are a couple of American divisions caught in the fray here as well. But overall, com uh, it's not actually that much uh, in terms of troops. But, uh, we'll, we'll wipe them out and then uh, I might hand uh, some territory to Germany here. Uh, how is my situation? Still not using any garrisons, but the resistance is yeah the resistance is starting to cause trouble here. So I might hand off some territory to Germany at some point. Uh, we'll see about that. But for now, it's just we will uh, destroy this encirclement here, and uh, Germany is making slow progress. A lot of American troops stationed here in the north. So. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have an awful lot of actual factories right now that we can use because of the uh, trade necessities, but uh, we'll deal with it. Uh, I have started I have started constructing the uh, where is it? The uh, Demon Mark I, a, uh, a st uh, strategic bomb bomber project which uh, has uh, some has some cannon turrets but also all the electronics. Uh, it's a six jet engine. A heavy bomber with a range of 7,000 kilometers. Not quite enough to reach across the Atlantic, but uh, definitely enough to uh, to cause some havoc. And uh, we'll 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 use that potentially against the British. We will see. But uh, uh, for now, the the navy is uh, expanding its reach, uh, trying to clear out the uh, trying to clear out the uh, the regions here. And uh, we will see if we can manage to get to a point where uh, where we have sufficient naval supremacy for a bit of a sea lion. But first we'll clear out the positions here in Ukraine. Another two American light cruisers, USS Valheu and USS Wilmington, together with their destroyer escort, have gone down. And uh, it is starting to look green on the Norwegian coast. So uh, North Sea is probably going to be our our main focus trying to eliminate any kind of remaining forces that are operating here. I don't know how much the British are having in terms of Navy on the home islands, but uh, I think at this point my, our, uh, our Imperial Battle Group has proven itself quite worthy. And just to give you a little bit of an impression of what my tank divisions are capable of at this point, uh, these divisions have somewhere between 130 and 160 armor. Uh, the breakthrough is almost at 3,000, uh, and the uh, the soft attack values can reach about easily about uh, above 1,000 to 1,500. So uh, nothing can pierce these tanks. Uh, these tanks are completely unstoppable and uh, are just uh, basically uh, are just basically swimming through the through the enemy lines here. And yes, uh, we do have, what, 24, yeah, about 40 divisions, 40, 40, 50 divisions here that will be destroyed uh, before we return to the main front lines. And I'll hand over territory to Germany to take care of. Uh, by the way, mean, meanwhile, um, Spain is, uh, has mostly lost, uh, has mostly lost northern, northern Africa to the Allies to nobody's great surprise, but uh, we have pushed uh, enemy forces back to Istanbul, which is of course heavily defended, and Italy is busy uh, running their heads against, this, uh, against it in a siege. And uh, we, haven't, we don't really have control of Greece, given the amount of enemy positions, but we don't really need to. That is, uh, that is an Italy problem. I'm more concerned of 
at this point. Uh, the Russian and uh, subsequently the northern, uh, the very north Russian positions that I want to take. And that's the last of it. Spanish Morocco has uh, capitulated. The Allies have uh, taken North Africa. Um, but uh, in return, we are about to destroy the last remnants of uh, the of the Russian forces in uh, in Ukraine. And uh, we are going to get ready for another push eastwards after a little bit of consol consolidation and uh, a border correction here with with Germany, because I don't really want to hold all this territory. Germany probably needs to hold. Uh, at least up to up to this line here, sort of. So I'll hand over some territory and then uh, we'll focus on the north. This is where it gets a little difficult. Uh, now the question is, if we just don't want to do that, uh, what if we go and just try to capitulate the Russian Federation? Because they're already 71% towards capitulation. So maybe the better way is just to push towards Stalingrad, just capitulate the Russian Federation. And uh, yes, we actually need to invade Ukraine. Um, so let's do that. Uh, let's make that happen. And uh, then we'll, we'll push towards Stalingrad. I think the Russian Federation is just going to capitulate. And then we can, uh, we can use the positions there to assault the Northern Territories and reintegrate those. March 1961, we are declaring war on Ukraine. So it's just a quick matter of uh, clearing clearing that area out we'll take uh, Kharkov and uh, the rest of the the rest of the tanks can 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 not oh because we haven't called Germany into the war that's why uh, that's fine we'll we're actually we're slightly mispositioned uh, except uh, Germany is in the war which means we can now actually uh, assault here directly I don't think Ukraine has uh, has much in order has much to offer in order of res uh, in in terms of resistance, so we'll send we'll send one tank division here, one tank division here, and I think that's about that's going to be the Ukrainian capitulation in a minute here. Uh, a little bit of a Russian resistance here on the Ukrainian side, but not an awful lot, and. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll be we'll be clearing out the last remaining Russian occupiers here in Ukraine pretty quickly, and that should be the end of it. And I will once again have to I will once again actually have to hand over uh, territory to Germany, because and there we go Ukraine has capitulated done. And now we have another salient. Plus, uh, I am equipping the I'm actually equipping the second army with some uh, some mechanized forces here, so uh, they can just you know just start like a general start a general push along the front lines without me having to having to uh, babysit everything. One of our patrol cruisers has actually engaged the uh, USS uh, Chattanooga and has sunk her destroyer escort. So even if they're alone and on patrol, our cruisers are actually reasonably powerful. Although, unfortunately, the, uh, the light cruiser has escaped. But uh, that was just our patrol cruiser. And uh, the fleet has found and engaged a large American force. So we're up against uh, two carrier, three carriers, USS Bennington, USS Lake Champlain, and USS Hancock, as well as USS Idaho, uh, two heavy cruisers and their escort. So with only 93% screening efficiency, we might be able to sink some things here. Uh, USS Portland's already gone down. And uh, I'm not sure if we can catch the if we can catch the heavyweights, but they've already lost five of their cruisers. But I think the carriers are going to make it out. But the Idaho has gone down, so uh, that's been a major victory. And I think the uh, battle fleet is actually chasing down. Uh, yes, we're chasing down the carriers, which have been stripped of their escort, and it's only the Canberra remaining plus the carriers and the flat tops have no way of getting out of there, which means that has eliminated probably the majority of American forces in the area. Still, uh, there's a sizable number of, uh, of Allied forces operating around the British Isles, but uh, we are now uh, operating... We are now operating all around... Uh, and I, I think we have 
too many areas that we're covering. So uh, we are operating all around the British Isles at this point to uh, to find and destroy uh, the remaining forces. I think these are the Americans that we are actually chasing here. So this is exciting. Uh, do we have seven capital ships? Uh, let's see if the uh, if we can. F yes, we have tracked and found them. And it's the Essex Hornet Yorktown and Ranger accompanied by Nevada, Massachusetts and North Carolina and their screening force. So this could get exciting. Uh, let's see how that's going to turn out. Uh, we, ha we don't have a carrier of our own ready just yet, but um, uh, we are already starting to uh, to take out their destroyers. And uh, it looks like the capital ships are trying to disengage. Uh, we've taken a bit of damage on, uh, more than a bit of damage, on uh, one of our destroyers here. But uh, I think we will try to, after we've, dis after we've uh, dealt with the screen and we've taken down the Nevada as well. So the, uh, the, the carriers have escaped, but the battle cruisers have done, have done a big amount of damage to them. And uh, I think they are now returning to, uh, returning to repair at this point. But uh, scouting, scouting the western, uh, the western approaches has definitely been, has definitely been the right, uh, the right call. I've got another submarine here that'll just stay in reserve. And uh, once the fleet has been repaired, we are going to go and engage the remaining American forces here in the area. While the main fleet is repairing, the light cruisers on scout duty actually are engaging enemy light forces left, right and center. And once again we've taken down a British light cruiser and eight enemy destroyers. And uh, we've got a convoy here, that was the submarines, another convoy. So the British population probably now being completely cut off from, uh, from any kind of supply isn't going to be super happy either. Yeah, they're not uh, the stability in the UK doesn't look great anymore. Uh, there is a British fleet operational, but we are still repairing the the main fleet uh, while uh, one of our torpedo destroyers has sunk five British submarines that have been uh, caught unawares on the patrol. Meanwhile, the submarine war in the Atlantic has reached a critical point. We're covering the whole seabed and uh, we are sinking transports off the coast of the Americas without their fleet being able to do anything about it. Uh, even them trying to attack our submarines isn't leading to anything. The British are losing pretty much any kind of trade and supply that they're going to bring across before it even reaches the British Isles and uh, all the the rest of the allies is losing convoys to the submarines all across the atlantic so uh, it, it has basically come to a complete standstill at this point and once the fleet is repaired uh, we will uh, we will re-engage the british isle area and clear out the rest of the allied naval forces the fleet is repaired and we are once again chasing British and American battle groups that are anchored on the Eastern English seaboard and especially in the English Channel. We'll see if we can... Uh, we also started training the first air wing of naval bombers. So uh, that'll start, uh, that, that'll start uh, hunting over the British Channel as well and uh, see if we can make a bit of an impact there too. And it looks like we have managed to catch uh, the American battle group. Uh, that's uh, that's three kept three fleet carriers, a couple of heavy cruisers, and uh, a fair amount of light forces. So let's see let's see how that's ending, because these destroyers are going to go down very very quickly to our own light forces, and hopefully we can catch the carriers. We did get the USS Indiana uh, sunk by the flagship of our fleet. And the carriers have escaped for now, but uh, we'll see if we can still get the light forces sunk. Yep, that's uh, one battleship, one light cruiser, 22 destroyers and four planes shot down. And I think we will be hopefully chasing the rest of that group still and see if we can catch them before they can uh, before they can escape. There we go. Uh, the uh, one of our scouting, uh, two of our scouting destro uh, destroyers have uh, have been intercepted by the American group, and that's only what our first battle fleet has been waiting for. Uh, they are inbound, and hopefully they can arrive in time to uh, they can arrive in time to uh, to take down take on the remainder of the American fleet here. 
We'll just have to get them into the area uh, before the rest of the Americans arrive or disengage actually is the bigger problem. So it's a bit of a hunt. Uh, I'm not sure how far away they are. Uh, where's my battle group? I think they're I think they're about inbound. But of course if the if the cruisers are disengaging first then I'm not sure if they can catch them. Uh, where are they right now? Uh, they are in the area, so uh, we have sunk, we've lost one destroyer, but uh, I think uh, we've only managed to sink those, be, uh, we man only managed to sink those uh, with the light cruiser and the destroyer before the actual battle fle field fleet could arrive for interception, which is mildly irritating. So let's get the, uh, do we have any air force? Oh, no, we don't. So let's get the, uh, let's get the naval bombers involved over the English Channel. And see if we can uh, do some do some airstrikes and uh, and get the get the fleet out. Meanwhile, oh, that's where they went. Uh, and, uh, they are they are chasing our patrol forces, which keep uh, which keep sinking. Their one light cruiser has sunk a heavy cruiser and two destroyers. And uh, we are starting to engage them over the channel. With with airplanes, but they, they don't they don't do an awful lot of damage just yet. Submarines are helping out as well, and I am just waiting for to see what the what the battle fleet fleet is going to be engaging here. Yes, this is the carrier force, but unfortunately we've lost the destroyer before the battle fleet fleet could get there. So it's a game of cut and mouse really. Uh, we still have managed to uh, to destroy a fair amount of. Uh, of things there, but the uh, the airstrikes are not ex are not overly efficient. Uh, we're losing more planes than uh, we're actually doing doing damage here. Unfortunately, I might need to send the the fleet a little bit further further. Uh, we'll send them over to Brest and uh, and try to engage from there and see if we can catch the rest of the uh, American carriers here. While I'm managing the tank forces, the uh, which one is this? Uh, this is the uh, second army. Second army is on the way. Uh, is on the way to uh, move east, move out east from uh, from Moscow. They have broken through. They have broken through the Russian lines, and uh, we'll just have them generally push ahead while uh, the uh, tank divisions are dealing with uh, resurgent amounts of troops here and uh, destroying destroying the fighting force on other fronts while the navy is still repairing after their recent encounter with the american carrier force the tallinn the first aircraft carrier has or is about to join the first battle group so uh, once uh, once they reach uh, one, once they reach rotterdam then we now have an actual aircraft carrier in our battle group and yes, I did say I was going to transfer the battle groups towards Brest. I'm not sure why. Oh, because this is an uh, this is a blocked this is a blocked naval zone. That's why. So let's get the uh, battle group moving, or maybe to Normandy. And uh, uh, w once we've spot something, then uh, they'll be out and about again, and we'll try to uh, see how our carriers are faring. Meanwhile, uh, progress is being made on the Eastern Front. And uh, I have destroyed a couple of uh, a couple of Russian divisions left, right, and center. But yeah, I'm I'm just managing the tank divisions to uh, to do small breakthroughs, destroy their fighting force, and allow the infantry to move on their own. We've managed to catch a fair amount of <coughs> the Australian Navy, but unfortunately, still uh, there are too many enemy ships operational in the area that uh, we cannot uh, we cannot perform the intended nor uh, the intended landings near dover uh, i have actually set the battle fleet itself on scouting duty so they are uh, although i do have to probably repair yeah i'm gonna have to send them to repair i think yeah there are a couple of ships that are damaged so uh, i'll send them back for repairs and uh, we'll, we'll keep trying to to catch the main uh, to degrade the main fleet of uh, of the allies meanwhile uh, slow progress is being made on the front uh, we've run very much into supply supply problems and uh, russian forces are uh, russian forces are numerous as as they tend to be but uh, 
And we keep putting pressure on with the armoured forces wherever we have an opportunity. I've literally had to bring the whole fleet because the British wouldn't come out to fight. And that has enabled us to launch the invasion of Dover. Because if they don't want to come out and fight, then uh, we have full air control over the British Channel with 2,000 planes up here in the air. And uh, once we've landed in, once we have made landfall in Dover, we're going to get the uh, we're going to get the air force on target as well. I have brought the whole fleet, including the submarines and the carrier force. And the uh, the mechanized marines are leading the charge here, so we will be making landfall near Dover any second now. The Americans are trying to are trying to stop us, but that's not happening, which means we can now redirect the air force over southern England and uh, begin with uh, begin with operations. And uh, we will be pushing in all directions. Let's take Portsmouth and uh, push toward north towards London while uh, we are immediately overrunning the American troops here or trying to overrun the American troops running out of Dover. We have brought some tank divisions, but the um, uh, the yeah <laughs> the the heavy marines are going to be able to to enact the uh, naval cro the the crossing of the of the River Thames into London without too much trouble. And we have taken Portsmouth. The American defenders are being pushed back on all fronts. London has fallen, and the British government has escaped to Liverpool. Let's uh, keep going and see if we can uh, we can secure the eastern flank here while pushing uh, pushing f uh, pushing the Americans back out again. Uh, we do have an airbase now, I believe. Uh, yes, we have an airbase, so we can bring the close air support over into uh, into the British Isles. So launching from British uh, from British air bases. We are taking British territory, and uh, it does not look great for yeah. It does not look great for the British. We'll be taking Bristol, and then uh, pushing all the way back to Plymouth, where there are a couple of British divisions actually stationed, while uh, other tank divisions are going to be pushing north towards Birmingham, uh, taking in the process all the other airports. We have cut off the American defenders near Norwich, so. Let's clean that up and the ports on the eastern side as well. Now I am going to, I am going to once again split the navy now and uh, get them, uh, get them on patrol because I want to catch the American carrier force if we possibly can. And while the battle is raging on land, the British are trying to intercept our naval forces over the channel. At uh, I have, I might actually split, uh, split that task force. Uh, that's not what I was trying to do. There we go. Uh, I wanted to select half of them. Uh, where is it? This one. Okay. I uh, will bring half of the Air Force over and help them uh, to combat uh, to combat enemy airplanes over over England. So we'll, where half of the fighter wings are covering, the other half is com is uh, helping out over England. And uh, I believe we have pretty much cornered the remaining British positions near Plymouth. And we can, we can, uh, uh, we've, we've cleared out the east coast, which means we can now move, uh, move further north towards uh, and clearing out the rest of them. Next stop is Birmingham. And uh, we have southern England under control. There is a fair amount of enemy fighters up in the air, but I don't think there will be uh, much cap that they can do. We've sunk a couple of Allied submarines on the way. And we are uh, just pushing them out on all fronts. Pushing, uh, taken burning. Birmingham has fallen. Leicester is going to be next. And we've cleared out the south, so we'll wait for the we'll wait for the uh, for the tanks to make their way back, and then we can push across the river line and destroy the rest of them. I think we can actually assault Nottingham from here by this at this point. We've got another tank ready. 
and Liverpool is going to be falling next. Uh, we have managed to catch, there we go, we have managed to catch three American carriers and a light cruiser. So that was our first carrier battle. And how has the, how has, uh, how has our carrier performed? Uh, let's see, can we find anything? I think uh, we haven't really managed to do much with the with the car carrier air force because they they were already destroyed at uh, at the point. Yeah, I don't see any damage done by the uh, by the naval bombers except we have lost one, but uh, uh, that's fine. Our battle cruisers have this. Let's push towards Cardiff, and are we still fighting in the southern England air zone? Yes. But almost out of it, so we'll be soon moving into the Northern England air zone. And I actually am going to have to put all of these onto a single front line. There we go. Now the uh, the enemy troops are concentrating near Manchester, trying to hold the capital in Liverpool. But uh, they are getting pushed back relentlessly on, on all fronts. And I think we, at this point, are probably fighting in... Yes, we're fighting in Northern England, so... We'll find a place to move the... Uh, to move the Air Force. Let's move the fighter wings and the close the air support wings north. And uh, start engaging the Brits in Northern England. While... Uh, keeping on... Uh, keeping the pressure up uh, and de denying them the airfields. And we are, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take Swansea and then we have a southern position from which we can, uh, from which we can uh, assault across the, uh, across the river line here. Any kind of attempts of counterattacks are futile. We have already crossed the rivers in the north. Uh, let's see if we can uh, encircle and destroy some of the British defenders. We have... Uh, we have clear uh, clear air over, mostly clear air over Northern England. We do have a clear air over the channels, so I can send the fighter wings. Do I have a, do I have an airport from which I can operate? N not actually. Uh, we can just operate out of London, honestly. Uh, we should have the range to take Northern England with fighters from London as well. Okay, pushing across the lines here. Uh, pushing the British North already from Cardiff. And uh, we'll assault Wrexham next. We have we have some support on the other side, so let's see if we can get to a to an encirclement of Wrexham. And we are going to try and cut off the British troops in the north, while the heavy uh, the heavy tanks are going to start the the battle in Manchester in a second here. Once we have them uh, once we have them on point. There we go. Last British defenders uh, pushed out of Wrexham and encircled, which means the rest of the troops are now going to push towards Liverpool as well. And have we managed to catch anything else? Uh, we have managed to catch pretty much all the the Dutch Navy here by the looks of it. No, that's not Dutch. Was this Yugoslavian? Uh, anyway, it's it's gone now, whatever it was. <laughs> so. That's dealt with, and we are yes we have encircled them near Liverpool, so we can we can push from the north as well, and that's the the last the last British defenders are going to have their final stand near Liverpool. Manchester has fallen, and uh, we are uh, we are. Yes, they're, they're making their last stand in the old capital or in the new capital, but it has already fallen. The British defenders have been uh, have been defeated. The government, in a panic, has moved up to Glasgow, but there is not really much uh, left in terms of defenders that can actually uh, that can actually stop us at this point. So at this stage, I am going to uh, I am going to uh, just assault. Uh, just uh, well, once the troops are ready, uh, I am going to launch the order here and uh, let them push north. Um, Northern England has fallen. 
there are still enemy fighters up in the air. I don't even know from where, honestly. Uh, some American fighters up in the air. Let's uh, let's pull. Do we have? Yes, we've got some capacity here. And the United Kingdom has capitulated. The great news indeed. Panama has joined the Allies, but the United Kingdom has capitulated, and the Empire of Finno Ugria is now in control of England. Uh, the British government in exile has moved into Belfast, which we are going to take over next. In the east, uh, we're pushing slowly but steadily, to, steadily towards Stalingrad. The, uh, the, Russian Emp the Russian Federation is building new, is raising new divisions faster than we can destroy the old ones. But uh, we have some supply in the north, so eventually we will. Uh, can we improve that maybe? All the way. Uh, eventually, we will make it. Uh, we will make it to uh, to actually having. Uh, we'll make it to actually having uh, our dreams of reuniting the empire come true. For now, England has fallen, and that means the United States stand alone. And in the United States, our operatives are very busy, increasing the uh, popularity of the Silver League and convincing the population that it's no longer viable to fight. 